previously on Failing Avocet. After a long month of curveballs in the boatyard, we were finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. The fanning was done, the blisters repaired, the rudder reinstalled. This video shows our final moments in the boatyard, but just because we splashed doesn't mean the work ends there. Today is the last day that I will be sanding. You can see I have all this brown fairing compound on all of our blisters. It's been a while since we've talked actually, but uh, our top sides are completely 100% done. They're painted and they look beautiful. So I couldn't be happier. Not that I don't love using this thing right here, but I'm pretty tired of it. So anyways, today I just want to let you know and show you actually that it's a, it's a good day, it's a special day. Uh, it's the last day for sanding. That right there was the last part of sanding on our bottom and really in all the entire haul out. So, booyah baby, I'm done with the sander. Right before I started painting, I wanted to explain to you exactly what we're gonna use for bottom paint. Now this is kind of a hot topic when it comes to different opinions from different people. And uh, even at the yard here, I've gotten some questions on why I was going to be using barrier paint, which is this stuff I'm opening right now. Uh, barrier paint basically is a two-part epoxy film that you're going to put on the, on the outside of your hull that protects the non-epoxy, meaning the rest of your boat is laid up with a ISO or a polyester resin. Uh, especially in our era of boat, ours is made in 1979, we are in kind of that hot spot for getting really bad blisters which is exactly what you guys have seen us fix the past month and a half. On Avocet, we have a few thousand blisters, and the whole idea behind this haul out was really to get the bottom of the boat as dry as possible, pop all of the blisters that we saw, relieve all that pressure, and then uh, again, let the boat sit for as long as possible. In a perfect world, we would have sat here for probably six months to a year, and uh, that would have gave the hull the best chance at getting uh, as dry as possible before we put on this stuff and seal it up. So we let it sit for about two months and uh, the whole hole is really dry. The laminate dried out really well actually. I'm, I'm very pleased with how it looks. So that's basically good enough for me. I'm gonna put on this two-part epoxy barrier paint and that will not let any moisture past this protective layer and uh, therefore kind of sealing our hole and the way it is. So we are moving on to the fun stuff, in my opinion. And now we get to talk about props. Right here is our first prop that came with Avocet. It's a two blade max prop. And on the left is our beautiful new prop that I will get into a little later. First off, let's talk about the two really differences between a feathering prop and a fixed prop. Uh, feathering prop gives you two advantages. When you are sailing and you turn the engine off, you can have your propeller go from its uh, working condition to its feathering condition and it gives you about an, an extra knot when you're sailing. So it's a really awesome benefit. It also means that your shaft isn't spinning continuously. So that's number one. Number two, a fixed blade prop isn't very efficient when you put it in reverse. 
This is one of my favorite things about this prop was that when you had it in Ford, it was efficient. And then when you put it in reverse, it was also just as efficient with it being as in Ford. Uh, with a fixed blade prop, you put it in reverse, you'll get a lot of prop walk. And that's something that we've never really experienced with Avocet. The biggest problem with our Max Prop was that the fact it was a two blade and it was just severely underpowered. In the boatyard, we had a really big decision. Uh, I knew I didn't want to stick with our two blade Max Prop. I was planning on just buying a fixed blade because I wanted the added benefits of a three blade propeller. Now I've been talking with one company in specific named Britons. They're located in the UK and they make a wide variety of things one being propellers and two being shaft couplers. I had always had my eye on what was called an auto prop. Now the thing that's so special about an auto prop is that it is a auto pitching feathering prop. You might be asking what that is. All propellers, every single one ever made, there's a set pitch or there's at least a pitch that you can uh, manipulate like our max prop right here. You can change the pitch of this propeller. You can't do it you know, seamlessly, but you can go in there and you can actually change the pitch of the propeller, meaning that you can change the degree of which these blades uh, are cutting through the water. So if you want more pitch, it's gonna bite more, but only at lower RPMs of the engine. If you go less pitch, it'll bite less at lower RPMs, but it also will work better at higher RPMs. Basically, the gist of it is that there is no perfect propeller at least until the autoprop was made. Now, that's quite the statement, but I truly think this is one of the best propellers ever made. One simple fact of why that is, is that this is an auto-pitching prop. The beauty behind that is that in any RPM the engine is in, it is giving the optimal amount of pitch. I couldn't be more excited to have this on Avocet. I can't wait to see how it performs in the water. And that's just about it when it comes to prop talk. Unfortunately, we do have to paint this work of art. Uh, it hurts me more than anybody to say that, but uh, there's really two options when it comes to painting props. There is Prop Speed. Uh, it's a awesome product, although it's extremely expensive. So the cheap man's way out of it and recommended not only the yard, but my brother uh, is Rust-Oleum's Zinc Paint. Now, what this does is basically the same thing as your zinc anodes, Pell's corrosion, and just kind of does the best it can. This is our first time using it, so we'll see how it works. I don't really know. <laughs>
Well, this is it, everybody. This is the accumulation of two months of really hard work, 54 days. I don't know how many days out of those two months it was raining, but it was raining a lot. Obviously, we had the COVID virus that kind of took a toll on everything, but hey, we made it through. The boat looks fantastic. You couldn't be any happier with how she looks. She looks absolutely beautiful. She's got her problems, but uh, nothing we can't fix, nothing we can't learn to love. As soon as the travel lift comes over, we are getting put in the slings, getting dropped in the water. Hopefully our engine starts. <laughs> Anyways, it's a, it's a really special day. Uh, we've got some friends watching. Um, yeah, today's the day of our sighting. Next on Sailing Avocet. 